out, I'm tired of myself, I'm tired of this town. Eminent Waste of Time, episode 92, presented by CW Motorsports. I'm Chad, and we have Steve Mueller with us. Again. And we also have Mr. Andy Kiner. Thanks for having us. Hey guys, wanted to interject here real quick. Uh, that, what you're seeing right there, was actually filmed when we were in Oklahoma with Andy. Uh, so, huge thanks to Andy for doing that. But, uh, in the meantime, AXCC round number five has happened and that is in Iowa at Greenhurst Farms so that just happened today today is Sunday this episode is being released on Tuesday so two days ago and I want to kind of update you guys on what uh, happened with all that so uh, from what I'm told the round there at AXCC round five in Iowa was very muddy I saw lots of pictures of guys being pulled in and out it was uh pretty rough one uh brad mapes i uh, have a picture of him being pulled out he's in his big peter belt with his uh toy hauler in behind it and uh didn't go so well sorry about that brad um but things happen right i mean we don't control the weather for xc racing uh it looks like this is all unofficial results this is all live scoring at this point but uh marty hart finished in first place with jason watt in second place these are overall results uh, Jack, the, I don't know, I'm gonna say Latron, Latrono, I don't know, something like that. He was third, Mitch Langford fourth, Scotty Lawrence fifth, and uh, some names of note that you guys all know. Uh, Mr. Matt Rowell, he got twelfth overall. Uh, um, let's see, David Sauter, we talk about him. He was thirteenth. Um, Mr. Steve Mueller the eminent performance sponsored racer he got 18th um he said he had gone into limp mode pretty much from the go and it just drug him down the whole time uh, not much you can do about that when that kind of stuff happens it's rough kyle cheney showed up um and he did not seem to do all that well he only got two laps in whereas the leaders turned six and uh he must have had some problems out there some other guys uh obviously had some problems too like will lacina he finished down in 31st he only turned one lap something happened with him uh that's kind of one of the sorry one of the local tracks for him so uh that that's rough um felt kind of bad for guys like that um to uh there's five for the pro-am turbo and they ranked this way. David Sauter was in first in class for them. Greg Hayes was in second. Steve Mueller was in third. Colin Jean was in fourth. And Will Lacina was in fifth. For the Pro Turbo class, we had Marty Hart in first place. Jason Watt in second. Mitch Lankford in third. Scotty Lawrence in fourth. Kyle Hart in fifth. Matt Rowell in sixth. Devin Smith rounding out that with seventh. I also wanted to throw in there that uh, Michael Plank and Barry Miller raced out at IXCR this weekend. Uh, Michael Plank took third overall, uh, so good job to him. Barry Miller finished lower down in the pack. I'm wanting to say he finished in like seventh, if I remember right. Uh, and he ended up, he dislocated his shoulder when he hit a tree. Uh, so hopefully you're okay, Barry. You're feeling better and, you know, you'll get back out there real quick. Uh, I think the machine was fine. It was just a matter of uh, the jar on it took his shoulder out of place. Uh, so also, Cam Mapes they and Brad Mapes, like we talked about, they were out there at uh, AXCC. And Cam did okay. I think he was sixth in class is what Brad had told me. I'm trying to do this from memory. But uh, good job out there, Cam. I know they're still fighting some overheating issues with their belt. Um so they kind of cam tried to just limp it along baby it through there he got a decent start going in i think he was fourth in his row something like that um slide some video in here um jason bannon was out there running single seater in axcc he didn't have his best showing he's usually a lot quicker he's been uh, doing really well i think he was actually first in his class going into this round and i think he finished 
fourth or fifth, something like that. Uh, just didn't seem to have a good day for him. Uh, it was a rough track from what I'm told. Not rough as in a lot of rocks. So they got about an inch and a half of rain dumped on them on Friday night going into Saturday. And while they didn't get any Saturday into Sunday, uh, it had just softened up the ground. And uh, I know they would already gotten some rain and they had debated leaving a creek crossing in that they had. And I, from what I'm told for Sunday's races, they ended up pulling the creek crossing out of the track just because of... Uh, it was it was too soft it was too wet it was just going to be a problem uh, but several guys had some real time and troubles getting through there i'm really sorry i missed that one uh, i wanted to make it out to iowa but with the previous rain out that it was and now the reschedule on the time that it was i wasn't able to make it i'd already booked time with my family and uh no way around that so that's why you're seeing a different background here and headphones and I'm just recording from my laptop to throw in some of this information for you guys with that being said I also want to say a huge thanks to all the guys out there all the race crew that I kind of know and run with they're all great bunch of guys but they've kind of fed me information and stuff like that so that I can bring it to you um, because without them I I wouldn't have first-hand knowledge of some of this so uh, yeah I'm gonna run a couple start videos here that I got from some of the guys um, and then as soon as that's over, we'll dump you back into the recording that we did with Andy Kiner while out in Oklahoma. So uh, thanks, guys, for hanging out with us. Andy, why don't you tell a little bit to everybody who you are, where we're at, what we're doing here. Well, my name's Andy Kiner um, with the AXCC. We're here at the Crossbar Ranch in Davis, Oklahoma for the Max's uh, shootout and uh, just uh, having some fun. Yep. So for those of you guys that have followed our podcast for a while, you would have seen Andy on. It's, oh, it would have been, what, back in February or so, somewhere around so. there. Yep. And uh, that was before the series, the AXCC series, had actually started. Um, so, you know, you, everything was put together in short order. And I wanted to kind of see if we could get you on here. And first of all, thank you. I know this is your work day. This is your busy time. And you took time out of it to come and talk to everybody and kind of, you know, tell them about what's going on here. But thanks for that. But can you tell everybody how the series is going, first of all? Because it, it was put together in short order, but I think you guys are doing amazing. Well, I really appreciate that. It uh, it's one of those things where uh, you probably bit off more than you could chew, <laughs> and uh, we but knew you're already in, so you better learn to swim. <laughs> there you go. You know, sink or swim now. Uh, no, it's it's really going good. It's one of those things where it's a lot different when you try to go out. You do it at home in your local series, you know, and we feel very comfortable. We're outside of our comfort zone, and uh, we're learning a lot. We've got a lot of different trains that we're dealing with, and we have a most importantly a lot of different people um and that's that's probably the biggest thing is a lot of different driving styles uh, how they like their tracks how they don't like their tracks and uh we're introducing that to a lot of different people yeah so um we are let's see we're technically on round five although we're going back to finish up round four next week right in Correct. iowa two weeks yep or two weeks i'm sorry yes um so we are about halfway through the season we'll call it through the axcc season 
So anything in particular that you've learned uh, from doing this? I know you ran the Iowa series. You still do run the Iowa series. and But this is a little bit, we'll call it the national level. I mean, I like what you're doing in the Iowa one. But have you learned anything from this that kind of caught you by surprise or anything? Yeah, there's. you don't have time for us to tell you everything that oh. we've learned here. <laughs> But, uh, you know, at home, it's just, like I said, it's in your comfort zone. We know the people, if we need something, they're going to be there to help. Um, we know where to go. Um, just getting the individuals and the people here to help us. Uh, we've got a great crew that's given up a lot of their time with their families and stuff to travel a long ways. And, uh, you know, back home, we do a, we do a race now. Uh, you know, we, sh- we show up on Thursday night. We have a race ready to go on Saturday and Sunday. Here, you know, it's all brand new territories. We're dealing with 6,700 acres here. Yeah, there's a lot. Here. We've all been lost at least once. You yeah. know, and uh, and there's snakes out there. There, there is snakes. Uh, we don't like talk about everything here because it even scares me. So, <laughs> but uh, no, it's just it's really just learning the land. Is is we don't have the funds, we don't have the time. You know, we're going to make the time to get out and really see a lot of different places. But going in blind sometimes at these places and. Uh, um, it's, it's just tough to get in there, get it set up, you know, and make sure that, uh, you know, you got what the people want. Yeah. So have you run across anything that surprised you in a good way as far as, you know, you thought it was going to be much harder and it's like, oh, that worked out way better than I thought it would? Well, I know this is probably easy answer, but is the people. Um, the people, you know, everybody's got their own opinion and stuff, but when at the end of the day, I think everybody really appreciates a chance and an opportunity to go somewhere um, for national. We, we definitely want to support our local series, but to have a place where everybody can kind of gather up from all the different, you know, from Indiana, from Iowa, from Texas, they're from all over, you know, and to get there and have a chance to, you know, to put go wheel to wheel with the guy that's supposed to be the best over here, I think is probably the biggest thing. And their families, just like back home, it just started a whole new family in the series. And, it's getting to be that way. It's like, well, where's Steve at, you know, or where's such and such, you know, and when they're not here, it's like you're missing something. Well, it, if it wasn't for the XCC race, we would have never inter- been introduced to the Louisiana king cake. Right. That we're now addicted to. Yeah. Have you ever <laughs> had king cake? I have not. All right, oh. Bubba. Yeah. We got the hookup. One of the guys from Louisiana brought it to us at round one down in Texas, and, uh, oh, man, it it's a giant fried donut with, like, different things in it and sugar and icing, and it's horrible for you, I'm very sure, but it is amazing. <laughs> so, um, so you guys uh, talked about that you're using the AIM system in the pro class, in the pro turbo class. I am a big fan of it, and everything I've seen has been great. What's been your experience so far? And I know you're still learning, so I'm not, you know. Yeah, we – we haven't done it justice to be honest with you that program that system has so much to offer and we could use 50 more people helping us yeah so it's came to a time where you get there and i know when you get done racing on a sunday people want to get out of there it takes about five minutes to download the data and stuff uh, we've had some weather issues early in texas um, just getting to know the know the stuff getting to know the individuals um we're learning a lot, but uh, you haven't seen anything yet. It's going to. We're going to see a lot this weekend. We're going to be downloading um, top ten guys in both the Pro uh, Turbo and the Pro One Thousand. We've never done that um, before yet. We've only done top three. Um, it's one of those things where in motocross we can go out there and we can see the people. You know, if you cut a corner or something, you get penalized. Out here, you got to take the guys on their word, really, and. You know, the best of the best, it's still hard when you're going for a, you know, a lead or something and you can shave a corner. But, you know, this is going to keep the guys honest. And it's it's really not going to make any difference what their name is or what what position they're in points. It's going to come down to AIM's going to make this a very professional series. And uh, it's just going to, you know, you're either going to be good or you're going to be on the bad side, you know. And, and yeah. we're not we're not going to waste the time. It'll be uh, definitely penalized if, if we see that. Yeah. Now, Steve... You're in the Pro Am Turbo. You're not required to have it, but you did adopt it early yep. because I can see this being a standardized thing across some of the bigger series in mm-hmm. the future. Um, so you just decided to adopt early. As a racer, what's been your perspective on it? I I personally love it, and like Andy said, it it's going to help keep people honest. Um, and I I like it from that aspect, and I really like it for the fact that it gives you all the data from your car from a whole race so it's 
it's kind of a win-win. I know there's other systems out there. Um, we kind of, I actually kind of got to see the yellow brick system from Ultra 4 today and play with that app and stuff. So, um, But I think the AIM is definitely going to be capable of doing the live tracking and stuff like that, like it, the, some of the other systems do. Um, but at the end of the day, this gives me all my data for an entire race, too. Yeah. I can go back and look and see if my coolant temperatures were spiking in this section of the track well why uh i i, I actually I, I was helping devin um over in indiana a couple weeks ago and come to find out after a race he was i think just about one degree from going to lint mode yeah. you know and we pulled his aim data and found that you know yeah so he was able to go back and make changes to the car so from my perspective I, you know i've said it before on the podcast i'm kind of a data nerd but it's kind of a great multi-faceted device i think for what we're doing yeah uh the thing i think i'm looking at it from both sides because i've kind of helped with series and i've also raced in series i look at it like from a racer's perspective i know coming into this series that this series is going to be fair and impartial because yep. you're going to pull the data and the data will tell what everything is it's not a matter of oh you know this person helps the series out so they'll kind of overlook something the data is going to be you know whatever aim says is what really happened we all know that at that point and from your perspective, Andy, it just gives you that little bit of extra, you know, validity to everything that you say. It's like, we have proof. This is what it says. And if someone's falsely accusing someone, you can say, no, their data just doesn't show that. I mean, it, it, it's a win on both sides. And I think it really should be standard across more things. I understand it's a big, it's not a huge buy-in when you talk about the dollars that people have invested. But it's still a $600 investment into it. But... When you got a race program that, on average, a lot of guys will have to spend ten, twenty thousand dollars in a year, six hundred dollars to say that you are racing in a stand-up series where you know the results are true and impartial—that's yeah. that's great to me. Yeah. yeah, that's that's really huge, and that's that's what we set out to have when we were introduced to AIM. Um, that's exactly why we got it. Now, looking at this and like talking with Steve and stuff. Um, there's so many more options. That it, it seemed to me at first like we're going to mandate it for the pros because we got to keep track of that. But now I almost feel like the amateur is the one that truly needs it because it's going to save him time and money a lot in yeah. the long run by doing it. It's a, oh, yeah. It's a great investment. So yeah. that's the part that I'm just not that tech guy, and uh, um, we're working on that. Um, aim has been really good at sending uh, people out and working yeah. with us, and uh, there's a lot to come. We've got a lot of ideas, that, and, and, and they do as well, that we're going to work on for the future. Yeah. So it's 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 a it's kind of slow process with us, but that's on our side, not AIM. Right. Um, and AIM is uh, they're out here this you know today. They're just pulling data for us, um, and we're we're just excited where it's headed. Yeah, yeah, AIM has seemed to fully back you guys and always have somebody here, and I mean. That, that shows commitment on their side, too, that they're not just looking to just sell the units and walk away. They're, they're looking to make everything better across the board and help you out as much as they can. Correct. And even we've had a couple issues where guys thought there was something wrong. And I know for a fact they've taken that product back and dissected it to make sure everything was correct. You know, So they're here to help. They're not here just to promote their stuff. They're here to help you after you bought that. So yeah. He was actually uh, replacing a plug on, on my car as I showed him it. Uh, looked like I got some water in it, and he's like, "Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna replace it right here on the site on the spot." So I was yeah. like, "Awesome!" So, so he just rebuilt it right here for him. So yeah, yeah I mean they've been great, yeah. willing to talk to everybody and explain, uh, you know, the features that some people don't know how they work. They're yeah. willing to show you how it works and how yeah. you can set it up so that you're getting everything out of their product that you possibly can. So uh, exactly. I I really have enjoyed it. So what does AXCC have? going forward i mean i know you you're still finishing the season out nothing nothing's taken away from that but i mean you have any big plans that you can lay on us for upcoming stuff i don't think i should not yet i, I gotta make it through this year first <laughs> <laughs> i don't blame you i don't blame you uh you know but we're we're always looking um you know before we walked in here to do this uh show tonight um i just introduced to a new property you know i won't say what state but we literally have five other states or five states, some of them we've been to, some of them we haven't. Um, I can tell you the biggest thing is we can't get in a mold, and that mold is to make sure, well, you know I'm going to this track this year, I'm going to that track this year. We have to be willing to move around. We have to be willing to go after that place that's new. Um, whether you've liked our courses or you haven't necessarily liked this one or this one's my favorite or this one's not, 
you can't deny that they've all been different. Right. And that's what we've got to find is continue to find stuff different and uh, be willing to move around uh, different parts. Yeah. And I mean, we kind of talked before, but Chad and I kind of talked about it on the way down here. It's I, I didn't drive all this way to run a flat grass field. I could stay home and do that. You know, it, that's the way I kind of look at it, at what you guys are doing and where you're going. I want to be able to run it all. You know, I want to try it all and uh, see how I do. Yeah, you so. want to try the rocks from, yeah. you know, Loretta Lens and, you know, some of the, we'll call this a more like high plains area, I guess, mm-hmm. is what I would classify it as. Texas was a lot of sand. I mean, yeah. these are all different things. Mm-hmm. And I kind of look at, look at a national series as it shouldn't all be the same kind of track everywhere you go. It should be that you're, as a driver, you can prove that you can and set adapt. up your machine mm-hmm. and you can master each individual mm-hmm. different terrain, or at least not master it, but you can drive well in it and yeah. place well to the point that that's why you would claim the championship the victory over everybody else correct and, and you know I, I don't want to knock anybody when i say this but uh, a lot of championships are won because maybe somebody else didn't show up type situation right and uh we don't want to do that we do seven races so we can you know steve can have a life and have a kid <laughs> you know not miss a race type situation but uh, uh we do seven races for that particular reason and then uh, just moving forward, you know, if we stick, we stick with that, move around. I think it's gonna, it's gonna come out well. Yep. Yeah, I've, I've really enjoyed coming to all your series. It's a haul for us for a lot of them. Um, two from now is a really close one, so I'm happy. It's only an hour and a half from the house, so I'll yep. take that one. But uh, yeah, it's you just can't get all the train if you don't travel. I mean, it's just yep. how it is. And for a national series, you have to expect that. I mean, and you guys are doing a great job. Steve, from a racer's perspective, do you have anything to add or to question Andy that you would like to throw in there? No, I I can't really think of anything. Um, I I guess a little bit of feedback. Um, I really enjoyed the track maps. I know that's kind of been a hard thing. Um, I know a lot of guys, at least we're around, they really kind of like the track map thing. And the the video, I thought the video, nobody else does that you know um so i thought that was really cool um i know like i said i know it's been kind of difficult for you guys to keep up with it and that kind of stuff but uh yeah i think uh just keeping info out there is all we could ever ask for and you guys do the best you can and i know you sometimes don't have all the crew and you know first year so a lot of learning curves and stuff but uh i can't i can't really say much more i mean i think you guys are just doing great and keep it up so one thing I can tell you is uh, I am doing this full time now, so yeah. I oh wow I don't have another job, so uh, oh, wow. uh, this created an opportunity basically for me to sure. be able to go do this. So yeah. I'm excited. There's stuff like you just mentioned, mm-hmm. uh, the feedback that we're getting. Um, there's been times where if you are doing a, this job 50% of the time, you're doing this job 50% of the time, I'm gonna get 50% of the effort. Sure. You know, yeah. so yeah. right um, now it's 100% moving forward. Uh, you know, it's all on my shoulders if. You know, if I want to sit around, I'm going to get 50%. So there's a lot of stuff now that we can do and moving forward and uh, and fix that stuff. The biggest thing that I want to thank, like Steve and, and you guys, is uh, when you talk about feedback, I get calls that I've had riders call me at 10 o'clock at night, you know. And and my own guys back home know that they can do that. But now once we're getting guys in Arizona, you know, and Indiana that just call up and you, you, you know you've developed that friendship now. They know that they can call you. And that's the way it's got to be is – we want that feedback and i don't want to just hear oh your track was great or this or that you know we got to hear what's wrong so we can fix it yeah. and it's our job to listen to it and make the corrections yeah absolutely yeah. no i i agree i mean and i think it's i think it's going really well i've seen some first year series that man they just struggle to get any kind of numbers and you know they struggle to put together a decent track flow or anything like that and it seems like you guys have that part nailed down i think everything will get smoother for you as time goes it's just it it's a little bit of growing pains you know when you start doing something that's out of your comfort zone like you said yeah, yeah and this may sound really silly when i say this but um i think everybody's looking at the numbers except for me uh, and i know that sounds funny but our goal is we're doing seven races i know i said this exact same thing so it's going to sound like repetitive here but is to do seven races the best that we possibly can. Those numbers this year is, is getting out, meeting people, um, you know, providing opportunities Networking. in different places. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I believe if we do that right, things will grow. So the numbers are going to come. 
but I can't expect the numbers to if you know if we have twenty racers, if we have two hundred racers, we've still got to put on that show in order to make yeah. sure. Yeah, you want to put on out. the best race, no matter whether it's twenty or two hundred. You you want to put the best race you guys can. Correct. I understand. Yeah, yep. you're wanting to do quality work every time. Correct. So I yep. I completely get it. So we're actually gonna end this a little early but andy you didn't get to do this last time you were with us we do trivia Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> so steve doesn't seem to enjoy trivia all that much i will say the trivia is not questions that most people know it's just not normal trivia so it's for fun you get imaginary internet points that we don't even keep track of so <laughs> we always just get a good laugh about it so maybe andy will redeem them at the end of the year banquet or awards yeah. or <laughs> So we got ten questions. We'll have uh, we'll have Andy answer first, and then Steve. So question number one: How much did the first surfboards weigh when they were invented? I'm gonna go with four pounds. Okay. I'm gonna go with twenty five pounds. A hundred and fifty pounds. Okay. Wow. <laughs> and they were about twenty feet long. Wow. Big surfboards, I guess. <laughs> I don't know where he gets this trivia, by the way. Well, we don't have surfboards in Iowa. So yeah, yeah. Kinda, we don't got them well, in Indiana. I don't know. Either. Lately, it sounds yeah, like we should have them. We should have them. You might take up surfing with all the rain you guys have had. <laughs> all right. Question number two. Where are the tallest sea cliffs in the world? I'm an in-the-border guy, so I have no clue on that one. I have I, I don't even know what to say. I have no clue. Not nope. in Iowa. I know that. Not in Iowa. Okay. <laughs> um, I will say Alaska. Molaki Island in Hawaii. They are oh. 3,600 to 3,900 feet above the ocean level. Oh. Wow. Okay. Well, I guess that makes sense, I guess. Yep. All right. Question number three. Who sculpted Mount Rushmore? Well, I'm, I'm not doing very good here. Nobody yeah. does. Don't feel bad. I think the average that anybody gets is like one out of ten. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I'm gonna have to pass. I don't know either. <laughs> His name is Gustan or Gustan Bulgram. I should have just said. Yeah, it. I was thinking. It. Yeah, that you knew that one. <laughs> yeah, you just didn't want to show up, Steve. Okay, question number four. What is the Japanese world word for harbor wave? I'll give you this much. It's easier than you think, and you know this word, and you have used it several times. Quad. Uh, boo. Tsunami. <laughs> oh. Tsunami. Oh, okay. All right. Let's see. All right. Question number five. What ingredient gives Cajun dirty rice its dark color? So it's a rice that they cook down there that's specific to, like, the southern states. Boy, this is tough. <laughs> I told you, no. This is not questions that anyone should know. <laughs> what ingredient gives it its color? Yeah, because it's got like a dark color to it. And it's from it's uh, Cajun. it's Cajun food, so it's down Louisiana. south Louisiana area. The guys that listen like Bubba Bel Air screaming because they know this now. They're yeah. yelling. Hi, <laughs> man. I'm just I'm not a cook either, so. How about um, oil? Chicken liver. Oh, okay. I just figured, <laughs> given the area. Yeah. <laughs> Question number six. That's what we're on. What year did rapper Tupac Shakur die? 2012. Uh, 2000, 2000. 1996. Oh, I was okay. I had to think back to high school there for a second. Yeah. All right, question number seven. What did American Harlan's David Sanders give to the world in the 1930s? Who? Harlan Sanders. David Sanders. Who's that? You'll know as soon as I tell you. You've heard of him? Trust me. Hmm. Kentucky Fried Chicken. Okay. That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> you are both right. <laughs> I was going to say Colonel Sanders. Yep. That is Colonel Sanders. Uh, that's awesome. Which he wasn't actually a colonel at all. He just gave himself that name. <laughs> so. funny. All right. Question number eight. How many dice are used in the game of Yahtzee? 
So, you know, you put them in the little cup and shake it and roll it. And how many dice are in that little cup? Five. Okay. I thought it was two. It's five. Oh. Wow. Look at that. Andy's beat the <laughs> averages already. Here. <laughs> He's doing good. Okay, question number nine. In what city were was the Wright Brothers bicycle shop? In what city? Yeah. It's getting serious. It's really thinking about it. Now. Yeah, I know. What city? I'm gonna say Canton, Ohio. Okay. What isn't? I don't know a city, but I thought it was North Carolina. It was the state. They were in Dayton, Ohio. Oh, oh you weren't man. far. Oh. Yes, they they had a bicycle shop there, but they actually took the first plane down to Kitty Hawk, yeah. North Carolina, to yeah, fly it from the beach. I was thinking. Okay. All right. Question number ten. Last one. Socrates was sentenced to death by forced inject in, ingestion of what plant? So Socrates, the philosopher, he was sentenced to death for whatever reason. What was he forced to eat? Poison ivy. <laughs> that, that <laughs> that's exactly wrong. what I was going to say, too. <laughs> Poison ivy? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Hemlock. hemlock What's huh? a hemlock? Uh, it's a poisonous plant. Yeah. Oh, okay. You don't, right. don't want to eat it. Okay. Not right. snack food. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Well, Andy, we want to thank you for coming on here. Uh, it's been great. We also want to thank CW Motorsports, our title sponsor, uh, TGM Off-Road, Spangs Fab, Watch Communications. If you guys are looking for us on YouTube, you can find us at Eminent Performance. If you are looking for us on Instagram or Facebook, it's Eminent Racing. And you can find us on Google Play, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and Podcast Addicts. But thanks again, Andy. We really appreciate you taking the time to come out here and you know sit with us talk to us tell us about what's going on with your series and you know we're looking forward to what you guys are bringing you got you got any closing uh statements and want to thank anybody well i do and i want to put one plug in but i I really want to thank you guys you know for uh we're sitting here you think about i'm from carla iowa you guys are out in indiana we're sitting here in davis oklahoma on top of a huge mountain three miles back into nowhere you know we're sitting here doing this with a bunch of guys and families out here um that right there makes my day i mean that's awesome so thank you guys for moving forward on that and and i just want to thank you know this race alone i want to thank make, make sure i thank maxis for be, uh, being our title sponsor for this race and the last thing i want to say is i want to put a plug in if you don't mind go for it um this has been got delivered out this this week um i'll let you guys know too make sure you guys do know the heartland challenge is being moved okay we're having to move that back one week to august 23rd and 24th and uh, i know that's not going to work i know we've got issues with already with some guys and i hated to do that but uh there's about five different issues that popped up that we had to we've done it on that date for approximately 10 years now and uh we just had to move it so just want to put that plug out there that is being moved and again thank you guys for doing everything you do for the sport so and if you guys don't know what the heartland challenge is check it out it is it is an event you should definitely if you don't participate at least go see it's endurance racing at its finest in xc so and four hours start at start at day and end under the lights at night yeah it's a really cool experience you know, and the last thing I guess if I can say, if I can look right in the camera and beg these people that in Indiana they're having a wedding on that day <laughs> to please take this, uh, it, you know, just food for thought, maybe move it up one week, and we would sure appreciate that. So. <laughs> we'll go with that. <laughs> so no matter who you're begging to change their wedding date, thanks, guys. <laughs> thanks. Tired of screwing up. I'm tired of going down. I'm tired of myself. I'm tired of this town.